and welcome to the 24th meeting of 2015 of the Rural Affairs, Climate Change and Environment Committee. Remind members to switch off mobile phones, can interfere with the broadcast system and committee members may be using tablets for the business of the meeting. Agenda item one is subordinate legislation and this first item uh, considers four negative instruments um, which are listed on the agenda. Uh, only the fourth of these, the Common Agriculture Policy Direct Payments etc. Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, has been drawn to Parliament's attention by the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee on the grounds that it breached the 28-day rule. Does any members uh, wish to comment on any of these pieces of secondary legislation? Yes. One comment, if I may, convener on the last one on yeah. the Common Agricultural Policy, which it's. It's uh, nothing other than a recognition of the fact that um, a Regulation 6 removes the references to specific species of grass that are required when a farmer chooses to under-sow a crop. And I think that was something we raised with the, yes. um, through the, or the NFU raised it with us and we raised it with the government. And I'm pleased to see that it had that impact because yeah. common sense has prevailed. That's very good. Yes, Claudia Beamish. Thank you, um, Just in terms of the, the same... Um, uh, negative instrument. I, I was just interested to see um, that there has there was an um, equality impact assessment, but there's no comment on what the result of, of that was in, in our in our group. So it would just be useful if we could know. If, I, I'm I'm assuming there are no impacts, or it would have said so. But I, I would just like clarification on that. Okay, we'll get clarification from the minister. But that's um, Sarah Boyack. Convener, it's the Environmental Liability Scotland Amendment Regulations. Mm -hmm. I just thought this is a probably uncontentious but actually quite important piece of work because it's all about keeping our seas clean and it steps up what the previous requirements were. So I think it's welcome that we've got this in front of us. Um, when, this, when it goes wrong, it's devastating for wildlife and fishing in an area, so it's quite good to see this coming forward to us. Indeed. Um, are there any other comments by members? Um, so, as the committee agreed that it does not wish uh, to make any recommendations in relation to these instruments, barring our search for some pieces of information that we've already agreed. We're agreed? Thank you very much. Okay, agenda item two, public petitions, uh, PE 01490. And this second item is to consider Patrick Krause's uh, uh, remarks on behalf of the Scottish Crofting Federation on the control of wild geese numbers and I refer members to the paper and invite comments from members on the petition just now. Mike Russell. Uh, I think the petition raises uh, and has raised over the last two years some very important points and regrettably I don't think those points have been fully answered and they still fully answered. And the problem lies in uh, a point that Patrick Crozer makes I think very well when he quotes this committee's previous position, and if I'd like just to quote it, in Patrick Krause's response, in the paragraph at the top of page 7, he says, Dr. McLeod makes a general point, a reiteration of something her predecessor also said, and she quotes, the National Goose Management Policy is informed by the 2010 Management Review. Uh, the Rural Affairs Committee on a number of occasions asked for a current review of the situation. We've also brought this up several times. And that's the key point. The policy is operating on the basis of a review that under was undertaken in 2010 of a policy that was set a, a long time before that. It is to cope with a very serious problem, and I know this problem from Isla, but I also know it increasingly from Kintyre, from Gia, from Lismore, spreading a, a, across from the West Coast. Um, and it was funded in order to resolve, or at least to keep in check, that problem. It is no longer funded in that way because the money is not available, but the policy objectives have not changed, and that is an impossible situation. Uh, there needs to be a review that starts with two premises. First is, what do we need to do to ensure that these numbers are kept in check so that uh, uh, crofting and farming can uh, take place unhindered, because they're very severely hindered in some places? And secondly, how can we pay for it? Where are the resources and how they can be applied? Now, there is a, an additional dimension, which is a European dimension, uh, and that needs to be considered as well. So I certainly have no doubt that the petition should be kept open, but that this committee should go back to the Scottish Government and say, uh, we think the nub of the matter 
is the operation of a policy that has not been reviewed since 2010. Circumstances, financial and other circumstances, have changed substantially, and the nature of the problem may have changed as well. And in those circumstances, there needs to be a new independent review, and it needs to happen quickly, because uh, this uh, problem recurs on an annual basis, of course, and each year my constituents uh, feel more and more strongly about it, as do people in Uist, as do people increasingly in Orkney and elsewhere, and it is growing and not diminishing. Um, yes, first of all, Graham Day and then uh, Sarah Boya. I, I would concur absolutely with that, convener. Um, and Mike Russell at the end there mentioned Orkney, which we as a committee visited fairly recently. And I think we were all struck by the evidence we, we found about the, the numbers of resident geese, um, the impact that's having on the community, the fact that the opportunity we'd heard about previously to sell the meat um, after shooting is proving quite limited. And, of course, the news that we also heard about the RSPB uh, withdrawing from the local stakeholders group. So I absolutely agree with Mike Russell. Thank you for that, Sarah Boyer. Yeah, I pretty much agree with the comments that have been made already. I think the issue of funding for geese management is actually quite important. Um, and it's the idea of monitoring what's happened over the last five years is also, I think, quite important to know what the baseline is at the moment. So what are the projects that you would need? What are the funding options? Um, and I think also impact on habitat management as well, because I think that's part of the, the agenda, particularly in the US in terms of the macro. Claudia Beamish. Right, thank you, convener. Um, I, I would uh, concur with the view that there should be a review uh, for the reasons that um, Mike Russell's put forward. Uh, I just want, um, for the record, to, for it to be clarified for the purposes of review, that it's, although it, it might seem obvious, that there, there is the distinction to be made between the protected and quarry species, and, and that sort of an assessment is, is an important one uh, as, to, as to the way forward. Um, uh, I, I was disappointed to see that the response from other countries um, in view of adaptive management, which the Scottish Government wrote about, um, has been nothing. And I, 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 I would like us to um, ask the Scottish Government to pursue that because I do think that there may well be models uh, elsewhere and, and it would be quite a, could be quite a short response that came on, on that. And I'd like us to pursue that. And um, uh, like, like my colleague Graham Day, I uh, had discussions in Orkney and so did Jim Hume. And one of the points that were made was the capacity of... Um, local farmers that um, which was not they were not able um, with the other demands on their time in terms of their their farms and and the the other things that they had had responsibility for to actually uh, deal with the the quarry species by shooting them um, even even where they were able to because and and also the issue around them not having the um, the equipment necessarily, even they didn't have the, the guns or you know, and the training to do that. So that's another aspect that I would like still to be considered. But I'm keen to keep the petition open. Angus Macdonald, Alec Ferguson, Jim Hume. Okay, uh, thanks, convener. I certainly agree with uh, all the comments that have been made um, so far. Um, I've still got concerns uh, that not enough has been done to, to address what's becoming uh, an increasingly significant problem, particularly in the Outer Hebrides. Uh, and not just in the US, but also in uh, Lewis and Harris. Um, so wh whilst taking on board uh, the Minister's point uh, in her reply that this is not just a problem for government, um, the SCF uh, make a valid point in highlighting that there can't just be <coughs> a reliance on land managers to manage geese, especially when crofters' livelihoods uh, are, are being threatened. And indeed the whole situation reminds me of the the comment in the West Highland Free Press about a year and a half ago, uh, where a, a crofter was quoted as saying it used to be the grey lag geese that were endangered, and now it's the crofters. So um, you know, the, the SCF in their, in their response uh, also make a salient point in that, given that the situation has got considerably worse in recent years, uh, the government shouldn't be reliant on five-year-old data uh, and recommendations, which, uh, which Mike Russell referred to uh, earlier. So while the Minister states that uh, an in-house or SNH uh, review will take place, I have a lot of sympathy with uh, the calls by the SCF for an independent <coughs> review uh, to be carried out. Um, and uh, as Claudia has mentioned, um, the, given that the Scottish Government's failed to get a response from 
um, I think it was the Netherlands and perhaps Norway that they wrote to for examples of how the management systems have been addressed there, would it be within the remit of this committee to, to try and get a response from the various governments um, or agricultural departments um, in, in the Netherlands and, and Norway? Um, we might be more successful than the government have been. Um, we'll have a look at that at the end once we wrap up people's comments. Alec Ferguson, then Jim Hume. I'll be, I'll be very brief, convener, but thank you. I just want, I want to endorse the approach that as was put forward by Mike Russell, which other members agree to. Um, I would just point out this situation also exists uh, on the Solway. Um, it, it is, it is uh, a national issue, this one. Um, the problem on the Solway, uh, and this is where I want to underline the calls for urgency here, because there are people who are going to pull out of that scheme. Um, and once people start pulling out of these schemes, then they lose a great deal of the credibility that they have in the first place. And the problem really seems to be one of success in a way, because the, the goose numbers, certainly on the Solway, have increased markedly since the scheme began. Um, I also want to uh, endorse the call for an independent review. I don't think an in-house review is satisfactory in this instance. So uh, I think it needs to be independent, and it certainly needs to be urgent. Thank you. Uh, Jim Hume? Yes, uh, concurring with um, more or less everything that's been said, uh, I just think one additional part that the Scottish Government should maybe actually explore is uh, along the EU pa uh, Parliament, the EU uh, Commission, putting point, point views across to there about um, what the situation is and uh, the need for action. And also echo what Claudia was saying and, and others regarding the shooting doesn't seem to be, and what we heard in Orkney, that the shooting doesn't really seem to be changing uh, much in the way of numbers at all, if, any, if anything. So we need to look at other options. OK. Um, Dave Thompson. Uh, thank you, convener. Uh, yeah, I thought the visit to Orkney was very illuminating, uh, especially in relation to the number of geese who now find it a lovely place to stay in the resident geese population which they didn't used to have any of, is now massively increasing. So I very much support the comments uh, from around uh, the table. The cost of shooting, I think Patrick Cruz makes a very good point there as well. You know, there's the time that crofters need to spend in doing it, and there's the cost of the cartridges and so on, and that's not cheap. So it's quite an expensive business. So even if there's a quarry species and they're allowed to shoot, it doesn't mean to say they're going to be able uh, to do that. And I think the review should look very seriously at all all methods of reducing the numbers, including dealing with uh, eggs and deal with the problem at a very early stage. And that might be something that uh, the, the review could specifically uh, look at. Thank you for that. Um, it seems to me there's a wide range of uh, agreement that we should seek an independent review urgently about this matter, that it's a national matter, and that uh, indeed uh, there is a European dimension, both in getting evidence from other places that have management schemes, but also in terms of um, how the EU uh, would review uh, such matters as a, uh, um, a derogation, uh, as well as the kinds of things which would allow us to have some uh, something in the armory to do this. Now, how we do it, I'm not quite sure. Um, Angus MacDonald asked the additional point about getting information from other countries. I think we should ask the Independent Review to do that and uh, for it to be set up speedily. But um, it's been suggested perhaps that the SRUC might actually have uh, con contacts in other countries that it could uh, you know, do some preliminary work for us and we could possibly ask them to do that if it's possible. Uh, but I think that we've got to make it clear that uh, the outshot of all of this is that the money has got to follow the policy, not the policy follow the money, however limited that is, and that, that the policy has got to be made clear in the conditions that we face today. So if there's a wide-ranging review and it's done quickly, I think that would be the best thing that we could possibly uh, you know, seek at this time by asking ministers to move and therefore keep the petition open and uh, respond to the petitioner with uh, what's on the record and at the same time write to the minister and ask for a response uh, ASAP and not when we come back in September. Okay. Thank you. I move on to the next item of business, which is uh, future meeting details. Um, and just before I do, Mike Russell had an update for us at the 
the moment about the milk. I'd just like the committee to note in the light of its milk inquiry and the uh, evidence it received from Mike Gallagher uh, four weeks ago that First Milk announced two things yesterday. One was the departure of their chairman, uh, who is, uh, has decided to leave as chair, and the board is now seeking a new chair. I think much more importantly and concerningly, a further drop in the price, the A price of milk by a full penny. Um, I think this does get very close to, if not at, the intervention price which we raised with the European Commissioner next week. I think it also creates the circumstances, most regrettably and worryingly, that the concession on transport for Gia and Butte uh, has been wiped out by this drop in the A price, that the advantage that might have accrued, or at least the lack of disadvantage that might have accrued to Butte, has lasted for essentially less than four weeks. Uh, I think many people who know this industry far better than I do are now incredibly worried about the viability of the industry in Kintyre and Butte. I will be writing to the Rural Affairs Minister today, but I hope the committee might uh, consider just expressing its concern that this continues and that First Milk continues to drive down a price which was already very substantially below the price of production. And that will affect also people out with my own constituency, of course, constituents of Alex and, and others. Well, we can discuss that in the work programme, which we'll be coming to in private just now, but um, we'll be noting the fact that you're thinking of writing to the Minister, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing the results of that. Uh, so thank you for raising that just now. Um, the next meeting of the committee is on the 2nd of September. We'll be hearing from the Scottish Government Bill team on Land Reform uh, uh, Scotland Bill. And as agreed in its previous meeting, the committee will now move into private and consider its work programme and I now close the public part of the meeting and ask the public gallery to be cleared. <laughs>